just so that people know what the other side of the mountain is like. I've been there, I've seen it. And uh, what you see up front is not what there is always at the back. So I thought the people of, of our country, our workers and supporters, every should have, everyone should have an idea of why we did what we did and uh, what our passion and what our commitment was to making this country a more beautiful and more uh, uh, just country. In essence, there is no difference, except that when we try to do it, we are called dishonest and unpatriotic. When they try to do it, they pass it off as far-sighted diplomacy. Now, it doesn't make sense. 2008 remains where it is. If they have decided now to resume talks and have comprehensive talks, what is the difference between then and now, or even between the time that we were in government and now? that's made them change their minds. Um, they would never let us, never let, let us take one step in a positive direction. Always accused us of being uh, soft, of, uh, of uh, kneeling down, of surrendering, uh, which I think was a very short-sighted and, and certainly a, a very unfair way of looking at a government's foreign policy. But they're not doing exactly the same themselves. We were in government, so if I said that we weren't responsible, it would appear that we were not in control. We took some decisions. We did take those decisions with the best interest of, of the uh, people of India in mind. There was a sudden sense of disquiet about maladministration, what they call corruption. Just people upset about not getting their uh, everyday, everyday facilities uh, without having to really, really, really beg for them. And there was a disquiet and we wanted to understand and, and address that disquiet, not let somebody exploit that disquiet. Unfortunately, the way we handled it and, and the constraints under which we handled it didn't allow us to succeed in our intentions. And the uh, Aam Aadmi Party got a tremendous advantage. But I'm, I'm very clear, and I will remain clear, irrespective of their getting 67 seats out of 70, that they were not honest. It was not an honest program that they gave to the, to the country or, or to the city of Delhi. And it will become apparent as they go into uh, their second year and third year of, of governance. So do you want to say they fooled people? I don't like using the word fool for the people because ultimately people are our ultimate judges and what the people decide we have to bow and accept. But yes, I would certainly say that they took advantage of uh, some vulnerabilities in public perception and they certainly uh, were extremely unfair to many of us by making wild allegations that they've never returned to. See, media is part of, part, a very important part of, of a democratic process now, anywhere in the world, but certainly, certainly in India. And the media has perceptions about itself in, 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 in diff different parts of the world. I'm not quite sure that the media has, in our country, it has a sense of uh, propriety and uprightness. Uh, they just conduct themselves as any, any other politician or any other ordinary voter would do, that if you like something, you go uh, to an extreme to support it. If you don't like something, then you go to an extreme to oppose it. But there is seldom really, seldom very thoughtful and balanced debate and discussion that would allow the best points to emerge before the people of the country. There are many other, many other factors that we are told played a role in, in, the, uh, in, in the, our lack of media management and Mr. Modi's uh, extensive management of the media. There are many, many factors. But I think one shouldn't speak of those unless you have clear-cut proof. Maybe sometimes in future one will look at this. No, I mean, uh, there was in the middle of the city 
um, uh, an incident, an incident involving police that was causing enormous disquiet. Right or wrong is not the question, because if the inquiry had happened, then we would know whether it was right or wrong. But there was a more enormous disquiet. And he was, uh, he was reluctant because the subject was so sensitive that he was not, not very keen, particularly conscious of the fact that the morale of, of the armed police and the police uh, force was, was involved in it. But finally, he, he agreed and we moved forward. And as I've said, we moved forward to actually finding an outstanding former judge of the Supreme Court, in fact, former Chief Justice, to accept that he would do the inquiry. But elections were around the corner. The conditions that prevailed at that time and the assessment of our leadership at various levels, including at the level of Delhi government, was not in favor of an inquiry at that time. So an inquiry didn't happen. Now, when, a, when an event like this is not inquired, there are always question marks that remain, which is not a good thing for the morale of anybody, including ordinary, ordinary citizens. It's good to inquire and pinpoint exactly what happened. So no speculation and no, no uh, wild allegations remain. Unfortunately, our circumstances didn't permit that to happen. See, for me to say there's been injustice, I will need a, I need a finding of, of court. There was. There was a, a preliminary inquiry by the Human Rights Commission. The matter went up to the Supreme Court. There was a trial. Appeals are pending, I believe, in the High Court. Now, to actually say that injustice was done would be unfair, uh, particularly when courts are still seized of the matter. But to say that for good administration and for morale of the people, such things must be thoroughly inquired into and the truth must be brought out. So as they, as, as they say, the, uh, you should separate the, the uh, fiction from, from fact and place it before the people. Why should we be scared of placing facts before people? It may be inadequate, uh, maybe they should have done more, but the fact remains that, that uh, it was a difficult time, it was a difficult subject, there were extreme sensitivities. Sometimes to do a little right, you can end up doing a lot of wrong. So for somebody who's in the hot seat of administration, uh -huh. they have to carefully, carefully weigh once again, one against the other. Sometimes in the larger interest of, of public perception and people, you might have to take a decision that technically is not as fair as you would like it to be. But as I said, ultimately, it's the moment in which somebody sitting in government has to take a decision. Their decision may turn out to be wrong or right, but they are the only ones who can take a decision. No, I, why should we raise the issue when, when Ahmadmi Party is in power? They have raised it already. Now they've raised it along with so many other so many other issues. Why don't they why don't they live up to all the promises they've made? If they genuinely believed that something wrong was done in Butler House, they should inquire. But if they believe that nothing wrong was done, then they should apologize for having held out before the elections that they would find uh, find uh, the facts through an inquiry. The summary of, of my book is, we've been through tough times, but when the, uh, when the going gets tough, then the tough get going. And I hope that this will, this will be a message to my colleagues and my, my, my vast family of Congress people, that we have to stand by our leadership. This is Sonia Gandhi, Dr. Manmohan Singh, uh, Mr. Rahul Gandhi and give them the strength that they need to take India in the right direction.